to welcome everyone here this evening. Um, sorry for the weather, but that's not any of our control. I'm sure that. I'm sure you and for those, I yeah, know Bob. For those that uh, that have already mentioned about trees being down, I have a place to call to the emergency number for the roads crew. However, I'm sure by the sound of uh, what's happened up around the. Uh, the 44 line from Healy's Falls right through to uh, the village up here, Marmot Havelock, it's all out there too, so I imagine like they're there out doing what they can. So if anybody really has to go this way when you've done the meeting, I would suggest you go the other way and stay away from it. I know Bob said he got around one but in the dead, so. <laughs> Uh, it might make it easier. Anyways, it's a pleasure uh, uh, to be here this evening for us. Uh, your council is going to sit at the back. Don will explain that. Uh, I'd like to introduce Don G. Denova to you. And uh, for those of you who don't know him, he has his own consulting business focusing, focusing on areas of conflict resolution, Aborig Aboriginal culture and awareness, team building and strategic planning. Locally, he has provided community care for Center Hastings with conflict resolution and time management training and assisted the organization with the development of their strategic plan. He also facilitated a community dialogue for the municipality of Marmor and Lake on their integrated community sustainability plan. And prior to moving to Tweed, Don spent three years working as a project manager for the not-for-profit sector, four years as a vice president of business development strategic alliance in the private sector and 20 years in the public sector. So, with all ado, I'll introduce uh, Don Dijonov. It's all yours, Don. Thanks very much, Mayor Don. Well, thank you very much for coming this evening. Um, what we what we want to do tonight is to engage you in determining what are the priorities you think we should be focusing on. Your council is very interested in hearing what you have to say. So what we're going to want you to do is we're going to want you to take this evening as an opportunity for you to list or identify what you think should be the priorities for the next five years. We're looking at a bit of a long-range plan here. Council will act on some of those items and others they may not, but they need to hear from you so that they have something that they can work towards. Now you're here tonight because you're concerned and engaged about your community, your hamlets, and your municipality. You're here because you have ideas that you want to share. And so what I've asked Council to do is, I've asked Council to sit at the back this evening and to listen. And they wanted to be here because they wanted to listen. They wanted to hear what you have to say. But I want you to direct all your comments to me. I want you to direct everything in consultation with me. They are just going to sit here and be silent observers. So the way the evening is going to unfold is, we're going to ask each of you to list only one item at a time. Because what we want to do is, we want to ensure that everyone has an opportunity to speak. So if we let somebody go on at length, then that deprives others of that opportunity. So what I'm going to ask people to do is to state one item at a time, describe their item, talk about it, and then once everybody's had a chance to speak, we'll stop the cycle over again, and then the person can come back up and share again what, uh, what they might like to share with the rest of you. Because what we want to do is, you're all here, you all have a voice, and we want to make sure that that voice is heard. Now sometimes, people are a little shy, okay? They might not want to get up in front of a bunch of people. What we've done is we've got a suggestion box, a, a comments box over here with papers and pen, and by all means you can write things out and we will take that into account as well. I also would like people to note that we have um, uh, coffee and refreshments over there. So anytime as we're going on, please help yourself to that because we don't really have any break. Uh, um, um, so, um, so we have that. I also wanted to mention about, oh, there's the sign-in sheet. Did everybody have a chance to sign in? Uh, if not, uh, we can get Valerie to bring the sign-in sheet around to you. So we'd like to make sure we have a record of everybody who was here. So, uh, the other thing is, is um, after we've kept, I'm, as you're talking about your comments, the concerns, and the, the priorities that you think we should be looking at, we also want you to come up with some ideas on how you think we should pay for it. So if you've got any ideas for revenue generation or different ways of collecting money, please share that with us as well. My role is, even though I'm also a councillor from the municipality of Tweed, but I am not here representing the municipality of Tweed. 
I am here engaged as a facilitator only. So sometimes people <coughs> might say, well, in Tweed, what do you think? I am not making any comments on any of that, okay? I am a neutral here tonight. I'm here just to capture what you're saying. So as you're saying your different things, I'm going to be writing them on these flip charts. And we're going to post these flip charts around the room. Um, sometimes, uh, if I'm having difficulty capturing the summary of what you'd like to say, I'm going to say to you, can you give that to me in a headline? Which means I want to make sure that what you're saying is exactly what you want me to capture so I can capture it on these flip charts. At the end of the evening, about 8.45 or earlier if we're finished earlier, everybody is going to get three dots. They're stickies. And what you're going to do is we're going to ask you to go around the room and look at all the things we've talked about and then take one of those dots and put them on the thing that's most important to you. Identify three priorities for you that you think your council should focus on. So you're going to get those dots when we're finished capturing the information, okay? And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this back with me and I'm going to write it up into a report, summarize it in a report, and pass it to your council after the next meeting we have, which is Thursday at the Madoff Art Center. Okay, at 7 o'clock. Okay. Now, the other thing is, I would like people to focus on the future. This is not an opportunity to revisit the past. This is, a very, this is going to be a positive experience for us. We want to show where we want this municipality to go. And so we're going to be focused on future. It's going to be future directed. Now, when you came in, you probably re received one of this, these sheets. It's called, Did You Know? Did everybody get a Did You Know? This sheet was uh, prepared by your CAO just to provide a brief summary, cursory overview of where some of the expenses are and where some of the major increases you've been experiencing. Let's face it, rural communities are under the gun. There's been a lot of downloading, a lot of funds being cut, and now they're in a situation where they have to find, identify other different resources to help pay for the services they want to provide as well as, as making sure that they try and keep their taxes at a reasonable level, which is a very difficult thing to do. The very first thing that's highlighted on this page is the increase in policing costs, which have been significant for all of the rural uh, uh, municipalities in Hastings County. And when you look at yours from 2013 to 20, uh, up to 2017, you're gonna see almost a $400,000 increase. So that money has to come from somewhere because that's not a contract you can negotiate. That is one you have to pay. Uh, also, you're looking at roads and resurfacing, and people are talking about here about how much it costs to gravel a road, and, and then to resurface a road, and then to do hot mix on a road. And these costs are all very expensive. Wow, we're Claudette. Claudette. Claudette, you're on. Okay. Give me that point again. What was you were saying? Well, when, you were, when you were speaking, you, you, you Can said... Can everybody hear Claudette, or do we need a mic? No, we don't need a mic, because okay. I'm not going to talk long, and I'm okay. whatever. But I like the way you said the municipality as a whole. And bottom line, like this other lady was asking, you said about the hall. It's, it's like it's the north and the south, and that's not right. It's, you know? So it's north versus south is what you're feeling. Yeah, I feel like I'm out prostituting myself to keep them going. Yeah, that doesn't feel right. Okay, now, do you have any ideas on how north versus south people could become more inclusive and more participatory? If I knew that, I would have fixed it a long time ago. Do so you have any ideas? No, no, but I'll think about it. Okay, you think about it, you come back. Okay. I, well, regarding this north and south, uh, of course, I was asked to speak a little bit in the history of this hall and so on tonight, but I guess that was, we're not supposed to talk about the history. <clears throat> but the fact that there was a Huntington municipality, and we felt a part of that. But when amalgamated with, with Madoc, uh, like it's, it's Madoc and it's us down here. And uh, the fact is, is that <clears throat> 
I hate to admit it, but I've only been to Maydock twice in the last two years, and uh, <clears throat> that was to a funeral and to the uh, registry office. But, uh, like, we in the south here are closer to Sterling or Tweed or Belleville and, for the, and, and, and get the same services, and yet all our tax monies is going to Maydock. At the time, Huntington and, and Maydock uh, Township was amalgamated. Uh, Huntington always uh, uh, were uh, operating within their budgets, and, their, and they actually had a surplus of money at the time of the amalgamation. And since that time, uh, Maydock has been uh, was was in arrears at the time, and that deficit has continued to grow instead of being fixed. And like we agree. Things have got to be, get under control. But Excuse me. Do you have any ideas on how we can move away from this north versus south and feel more inclusion, inclusionary, feeling part of the municipality? I'm going to start with you first and see if you have any. And if not, we can move around the room and get some ideas from others. It's up to you. Well, the, well there's, there's got to be cooperation uh, with, with other municipalities because we can't afford a, 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 an arena in Sterling and one in Tweed and one in Maydock with the declining uh, young people, uh, uh, the, the number of young people that, that's in the community. Uh, the, the costs are right out of control, uh, and yet it's costing us that never use the, these facilities in Maydock uh, thousands and thousands of dollars of our tax dollars going back there and none of us using them. And that's why we're feeling left out. So are you also looking at then at more shared services? That's one way that, that, uh, that money could be saved, we feel. Yes? I, I just have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm wondering what steps council has taken in order to secure funds for these type of community projects, such as grants or other funding opportunities that are outside of our tax base. Or so what they have done, or what they plan to do. So as the community looks, as we have in the past, looked to support each other and support the residents. If if we look to have become involved, we're not doubling up what they might have already done. So what have they done in order to, to raise funds or secure funds for facilities such as this? And what steps do they plan to take? Um, I'm under the impression that council. What they do is they try to investigate every funding opportunity that they possibly can. Um, I don't have a list of those here to, tonight, but I'm sure that there would be a list available from uh, from council uh, or from the municipal office to ensure that there isn't going to be implications. Um, so it's not available on the web pages yet. So just as we're moving forward, um, it would be a good idea. Okay, let's say, okay. So it would be a good idea to to. to the simple solution is. Keep Mario Hall open as long as the people are willing to pay their share of the taxes. That's it should be kept open to the part of this area. Oh, excuse me, sir. Those are um, yeah, we don't want to write on those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How much does those cost? Those sixty thousand dollars. No, no, no. I got my hand. No, but they oh. any tape shouldn't be on them. They should be on the tape. Okay. We don't. Have Yes, please go ahead. I have an idea that in order to pay for all the services that are provided, it's time somebody managed our money better. The money that we have coming in, and the fact that we're in the red, is absolutely ridiculous. So that's the only order to travel, and you get cut. <laughs> so, better management of money. Have you got any ideas? Somebody back here talking out of respect? No. The other thing you mentioned, uh, is there any way uh, to amalgamate the north and the south? Not really, because this is an, excuse me, an example of how it is. Uh, we're supposed to be all one after amalgamation. Well, the only thing we gained from that was a ton of debt. Uh, okay, I'll go to you then, I'll go to you wrong. Okay, so. Interested in saving money and how? Sure. Okay. Okay, mine's on the arena. Mm -hmm. There's no possible way we can keep it open with a deficit of 
$36,289 plus a projected revenue of $74,531, which we do not have. So that, or that makes our arena a deficit of $310,820. Sterling only has a deficit of $103,650. $117,645. Marmor Lake, $132,404. Their three totals is $353,699. The arena should be closed until such time two municipalities have a formal agreement spelling out the cost, sharing arrangements related to every area of spending, and issue of the rent is directly related to carrying an excessive load that relates directly to wages and benefits. And to the two municipalities must have a cooperative and transparent financial administrative management relationship to close the arena until that is done. Okay. You can have my copy. Okay, that's good. Thanks. And put up with your file. Thank you very much. Well done. Close your mouth and tell. I, I just want to talk about saving money also. Uh, it's not over a five year period, Don. It's over today. Tomorrow we can save this money, uh, which will help down the road in five years. Uh, our municipality uh, raises funds, uh, as everybody knows, through taxes. Uh, so is it the lack of revenue that we're having a problem here? with, even though we're, the taxes were raised by 5%, or is it our spending habits? Revenues in the municipality generally raised by taxes, like I said, and a small portion can be attributed to driveway permits, sales culverts, etc. Our spending habits can be over a great number of programs. One such program that costs us substantially, and this is, uh, councillors don't seem to want to hear this, but is our employee benefit package. <laughs> which I believe is carried by a manual life insurance company. Presently, the taxpayer, our municipality, you and I, pay 100% of the premiums for the employees. 100% of the premiums. That picture is $195,330 <coughs> per year. That's a lot of money for a benefit package. I don't, personally, I don't know of any government agency that pays 100% of the premiums for their employees. So you have no problem with the employee benefit package, you would like to see the premium lowered? No, I would like to see the premium shared, shared. with the employee and the employer. <clears throat> now if that takes, Don, a look at different carriers to come up with another package, that's fine. I know of a, a, a neighboring municipality that uh, has long-term income protection or their employees plus short-term income protection. We do not have short-term income protection. But this neighboring municipality has both. The employees pay 100% of those premiums. But the municipality has looked a little farther than across the table and have figured out if the employee pays for short-term uh, income protection, there's a decrease in the IE premiums for that municipality to pay. So they, it is a win situation for them. Plus they have that short term for their employee. So even if we went to a 50-50 split, that would save our municipality 97,600 and some dollars. That's roughly two and a half percent of our budget. That's a lot of money to pay for benefits. And I, like I say, I don't know of any place where we pay the employer pays 100% of the premiums. It just doesn't happen anymore. Other than maybe Hydro One, and they might be sold. Okay, thank good. you. Thank you, Ron. So, Ron, what I did here, I said the employee, employee benefit package, there's a, right now it's 100% premium paid. Would like to have the premium shared with the employee in the municipality and also to look at other providers to see if there's an opportunity to get a better deal somewhere sure. else. Okay. And the graveling of private roads in the municipality. Okay. Okay, so before moving to Centre Hastings, Lauren and I lived in the village of Sterling for four years and Oak Lake for 18 years. And of course, you know where Oak Lake is, it's just south of the village of Sterling. Our home in Oak Lake was on a private road. 
which was maintained by both permanent and seasonal residents. All costs of having road work, such as grading, loads of gravel, and snow plowing was paid out of pocket by all of us, a shared cost to the property owners. Quinney West, to this day, do not maintain or pay any costs towards maintaining the road simply because the road is private. During the summer months, Oak Lake Cottagers Association would organize a weed harvester to visit the lake, or for those who wish to have their lake frontage cleaned, paid out of pocket for this service. This was a personal choice by the residents of the lake and not of Quinty West, or Sydney Township at the time. No cost to the municipality. I feel as do others, the taxpayers should not be paying towards the upkeep of private roads, as well as harvesting weeds on Mortar Lake. This cost should fall onto the residents of Mortar Lake who wish to have the services, not the taxpayers. The weed harvester, in my opinion, is not an asset by the liability to Centre Hastings. Private roads, let's work to improve the municipal roads first. I've been listening to a lot. I've been involved in the community for a long time. Everybody's talking dollars and cents. They're not looking at, instead of just saying spend, spend, or don't spend, this hall, Ivanhoe Hall, the ones in Maida, the arena, the recreation facilities, fill a very important social aspect. And that's what everybody here is ignoring. This is a community meeting place. It provides a social aspect to the community, as does the arena, as does the skate park. And that's what should be important to you people, and it should be important to the council. They should realize that, yeah, maybe it costs a little bit of money, a little bit extra, but look at the social value to all the people that live in the area. So you spend a little more because you have a social aspect, a community meeting place. So you end up with a percentage higher on your taxes. Then like other people are saying, for the basics, the road operations and that, which I know nothing about, there you can try to trim money. But why sit here all night and argue about it? This hall should not be closed. I said that earlier. It has a very strong social purpose, as does every other facility that we have. And that's the only reason. Right, right point blank there, you should all be saying it stays open because we need it as a social meeting center. And that should be, that should convince the council that this is what these people want. Don't even think about it. Rather than just continually picking at, at every little thing. This should stay open because it has that social value. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so you're okay? Okay. Adam, I'm going to For the number, for first reason. Go ahead. First reason is because garbage will be strewn along roads in rural areas on private property, etc. <coughs> okay. Second reason. Mm -hmm. The lake people will not use bag tags. Lake people? The lake people, they put theirs out in groups of 12 to 15 at one depot. So why would they buy a bag tag? <coughs> this pal is going to pick it up and Okay, next. And we have encouraged people for years to send the garbage to the garbage dump. And tags will discourage them. and area, uh, when it was built, uh, we all chipped in, we uh, donated a ton of money, uh, uh, everyone did, 
Um, unfortunately, there was a big concern with Maydock Township and the village. It ended up that we were lucky enough to have a doctor as we had had for years in Bell. But he was on holidays. I live in the municipality, have all my life. I phoned the medical center and I wondered if I could get in. It was an emergency. I could not get in the door to one doctor. There were five there. There are five. Um, this, I was blown right away by this. I don't know how many other people have this concern. And the other one is, I believe that we've spent quite a bit of money on a, a blue water imaging. Um, it is not going to be coming <coughs> to the community, but we have no idea of how much money has been put into um, to this building to get ready for their um, for them to come. Uh, what did you call that again? Sorry, I missed the first part of that. Blue water in imaging services. It's a blood service. Oh, for, and are you talking about here? The medical yes, center. The medical center. <laughs> okay. I did write in a recent article that the X-ray ultrasound uh, service contract was discontinued. That was in the minutes of a meeting, a special meeting, May 17th. And I did publish that. You will find that online in the minutes of council, May 17th, special meeting. Um, and uh, even before I was on council in Tweed, when I was the chair of the Integrated Community Sustainability Plan, Council often asks other people to, to, uh, to undertake those kinds of roles in engaging the public, of which I did before, um, only because sometimes people speak a lot more freely, okay, uh, when the people that they're talking about or the programs and services that they're offering might speak more freely when they're not speaking directly to them. The other thing is, sometimes, and I'll put my counselor hat on for you, we as counselors sometimes might not give the right vibes back either to people when they're speaking, because body language is a big thing. We want to hear what people have to say, but sometimes we, 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 we might show, uh, show, show our, uh, through our, 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 our facial expressions or our gestures that we're not quite comfortable with what's being said. And they didn't want to deter anybody from being vocal and sharing everything. So I think that's the reason why they did it. The other reason why we have a meeting here and a meeting in Madoff, as I think what council was thinking, if we just did it in Madoff or if we just did it here, then people on both sides would feel alienated. So it's one of those things, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You know? And so, yeah, very much. There you go. So I, thank you very much for raising that because it's good for everyone to be aware. But I think that sort of is the reason why some of those decisions were made the way that they were. I don't know how I was in the I know, but that would have been a third one. <laughs> okay, so what we're... Yes? That adds to the north-south problem, doesn't it? It does. We're having a meeting down here for us, mm -hmm. and they're having one in Madoff for Madoff. But, what, but I think what they're trying to do is they want... If they only had it in one of those two places, or then the other group would have felt alienated. Why is it not happening in our community? So um, you, it's difficult. Here, here, and then we're finished.